Every nation, every country, has its own creepy stories, they can be funny, and sometimes scary. Today we will talk about a Japanese urban legend. Molly was sitting at the table with headphones on and eating cornflakes, constantly distracted by the phone. Her friend, Sarah, wrote to her. They're supposed to have a party tonight, at one of the cottages out of town. Friends have been waiting and preparing for this event for a long time and finally, they waited. With a creak of the door, Molly's brother, Ben, came into the kitchen. He greeted his sister and sat down at the opposite end of the table. Ben knew that there would be a party today and really wanted to go, but his sister flatly refused to take him because of his age. By the way, Molly was 18 and Ben was 16. Ben decided to try his luck again and turned to his sister. Molly slowly took off one earpiece and looked at Ben with a serious look. Ben realized without words that he didn't even have to start. Immediately Ben remembered one of the old Japanese legends, he understood that his sister would have to go home alone and decided to dilute her fantasy with a story. He slammed his palm on the table, which made his sister shudder and exhale nervously. She took off her earpiece and stared at Ben. Ben, on the other hand, stuck on the chair and with a malicious smile began to lead to the story. He began the story. According to legend, Reiko ran over a train somewhere in Japan and cut her body in half. Her legs separated from her torso and now the woman uses her elbows to move, making a tac tac sound, so she was called Teek Teek. She is looking for teenagers who are walking at dusk and kills them by using a scythe to separate her legs from her torso, so she is looking for her legs. And to escape from it. Molly did not believe in such a thing, so before she had finished listening to the last sentence, she put on headphones and waved her brother to leave. With a satisfied grin, Ben left the kitchen, realizing that he still managed to sow a share of fear inside his sister. The party was already in full swing, music was playing loudly in the cottage and there was a smell of alcohol, teenagers were having fun, drinking and dancing. After a while, at about midnight, a strong wind blew and raindrops began to fly, and soon, lightning appeared. It was already 2 o'clock in the morning, the weather had not calmed down, which cannot be said about teenagers. Someone was going to go home, someone stayed the night right in the house. Since Molly was not so far from home, and she wanted to get some air, Molly decided that it was better to go home. After saying goodbye to all her friends, she left the house and soon was walking along the night highway, on the right there was a field in which rye was being harvested, and on the left there was a dense forest. Every 20 meters there were lanterns that illuminated a section of the road. It was a small oval, when you approach the lantern, you cannot see what was at the opposite end of the light oval. Molly was walking along the night highway on the left side, that is, on the side of the forest. The girl was walking and listening to music, everything was fine until she heard the crunch of branches somewhere in the forest. She pulled out the headphones and stopped peering into the forest, seeing no one, she went on until she remembered her brother's morning story. At that moment, the girl's heart began to beat wildly, she began to look around and reassure herself that this was just a fantasy. Putting the headphones back on, she turned up the music and quickened her pace. It seemed to her that someone was staring at her intently, goosebumps ran down her spine. The wind blew with renewed vigor, and a strong coolness wafted from the forest. And suddenly, in addition to the music, the barely distinguishable word Nogiai was heard from the headphones, the voice was velvety and gentle. Molly pulled out her headphones and listened again, but when she didn't hear anything, she switched the music and it didn't happen again. She walked turning around every five seconds. Casually, the girl turned her gaze towards the forest and saw two glowing dots at the level of her legs. At first, she thought it was a wolf or a fox, but her guesses were cut short by lightning, which blinked and illuminated everything for a moment. That's when the girl saw her long black hair, skin as white as snow, lots of cuts and bloody hands with worn elbows. Her heart was almost jumping out of her chest, the girl took off and ran forward, behind her she heard the beats of tac tac, tac tac, but she did not dare to turn around. 
Suddenly, the words began to come from the headphones, legs, legs. Where are my legs? The voice was shrill and hoarse. Molly took off her headphones and picked up the pace. Still, turning around, she saw a terrible thing. The splintered girl, on one hand, crawled after her with incredible speed, leaving a bloody trail behind her. Molly saw a lantern ahead, it was her salvation. And so she went into the oval where the light fell, turning around, she saw no one. Suddenly the lantern went out, and from the front Molly heard, the lantern lit up and two meters away from her she saw Teak Teak. Molly wanted to remember how to escape from her, Ben was telling her, but she just didn't want to listen. The lantern went out, and the wind drowned out Molly's heart-rending scream. In the morning, the girl's torso was found hanging from a lantern, suspended by her hair, but without legs. The second story. It was a dark winter night. Snow was falling slowly. Street lights illuminated the road. I was walking home. I lived alone, so I was in no hurry. Suddenly I heard slow footsteps behind me. I stopped and looked back, but I didn't see anyone. I decided to speed up the pace. Footsteps began to be heard again, they also accelerated. I began to walk faster, but the steps did not lag behind. I looked around sharply, but there was still no one behind me. I blamed my imagination and slowed down, ignoring the footsteps behind me. Suddenly I felt dizzy and blurred in my eyes. I leaned against the wall of the nearest building and closed my eyes. The moment my eyes were closed, something changed. When I opened my eyes, I no longer saw the light of the lanterns, the falling snow, and it was no longer night. The sun was shining, a light breeze was blowing, and a thin layer of snow lay under my feet. I fell asleep, I thought at once. My first thought was that I was dreaming now. Well, a dream is a dream, with this thought I went down the road. The road was long, much longer than it really is. I kept walking, looking at the buildings around me. And suddenly I saw him. He just stood there and did nothing. I stopped, not believing my eyes. It was the first time I saw him in a dream. We both stood motionless for a while longer. He started coming towards me. I, forgetting that it was a dream, backed away, but ran into a wall. He was getting closer and closer and closer. Here he is already at a distance of half a meter. He said, You weren't trying to run away from me, were you? I woke up immediately. Realizing what had happened in my dream, I quickly went home. Footsteps followed me again, but now I didn't have to look back, I already knew who was following me. After a while I was already at home. I sat down in a chair and began to think what I should do. A knock on the door interrupted my thoughts. I was really scared. Who would knock at such a time? I went to the door and looked through the peephole. Neighbor. I felt incredibly relieved. He opened the door, but there was no neighbor, instead of the neighbor he was. I closed the door in horror, but it was too late, footsteps were already heard in the apartment. His part managed to enter. I took a knife from the kitchen to feel at least a little protected. There was another knock on the door, but no one was visible through the peephole. I sat down in the chair again. The knocking on the door did not stop, as did the footsteps in the apartment. Sitting in a chair, I fell asleep. When I woke up in the morning, I immediately noticed that the footsteps and knocking on the door had stopped. Passing by the front door, I saw an envelope. There was a note in it, you can't escape. I looked out the window. He was there. As soon as I noticed him, I immediately heard footsteps and a knock on the door. This went on for several days, I was already going crazy, I couldn't take it anymore. I was standing near the front door. The knocking on the door did not stop, but only grew louder, as if the one on the other side of the door was running out of patience. After standing at the door for a minute, I opened it, 
There was no one behind it, and I left the apartment. I had a choice, go outside and try to escape from him or go up to the roof and end everything forever. And now I'm already on the edge of the roof, gathering my thoughts, wondering if I should jump. I looked ahead and saw him, the one who was outside the door, the one who walked through my apartment, the one who seemed the kindest at the first meeting, and the most cruel at the last, the one who, having earned trust, stabs in the back, causing even more pain. He didn't give his name, didn't mention his nickname. He was just a man in a hat. I moved away from the edge when I saw him. But something was behind me, it didn't let me go far. I turned around and saw him. He pushed me off the roof. I fell down and saw him enjoying what he had done.